the displacement of a particle from its mean position is given by y is equals to 0 0.2 times sine of 10 pi t plus 1.5 pi times cos of 10 pi t plus 0 0.5 pi. So this is displacement y as a function of time. The motion of the particle is. So just by looking at this dangerous looking equation, we have to comment on the motion of the particle, whether it is simple harmonic motion or not. So option A says, uh, the motion is periodic but not simple harmonic. Option B says it is non-periodic motion. Option C, simple harmonic motion with the period of uh, 0.1 seconds and option D, simple harmonic motion with the period of 0.2 seconds. Okay, so these are the options. Now how can we tell whether the motion is SHM or not? How can we tell that? Well, the straight way is to break this equation. So we will get some different different terms and uh, let's see how do we break this equation. This equation in fact contains a term of sine and cos together multiplied with each other. So we can have a look at our identity, a famous identity. Twice of sine A cos B can be written as sine of A plus B plus sine of A minus B. This is the identity. Do you remember this trigonometric identity? If you don't remember it, just mug it up right now. Okay, now let's apply this identity. So first of all, we will write our equation like this. Now you can see twice of sine of something and then cos of something. Now let's see these. So we have 0 0.1, then sine of this plus this. We have 20 pi t plus 2 pi. And then we have sine of this minus this. So 10 pi t, 10 pi t cancels out and we get uh, pi, just pi. Okay, now this is y. Now what is this sine pi? What is sine pi? Sine of pi is 0. So we have 0 0.1 sine of 20 pi t plus 2 pi, just this much. Now, what is sine of theta plus 2 pi? What is sine of theta plus 2 pi? It is sine of theta. So we can just remove this 2 pi also and we get this thing. Y is equals to 0 0.1 sine of 20 pi t. This is the equation. And you can compare this with A sine of omega t. Yes, yes. So this equation will represent a simple harmonic motion with the time period with the time period of 2 pi by omega and we have 2 pi divided by 20 pi because 20 pi is omega. Now we can see it is 0 0.1 seconds. So we have a simple harmonic motion with the time period of 0 0.1 seconds, right? Now we can go and mark option C, SHM with the period of 0 0.1 second as the right answer for this question. So let's have a look at this question on acceleration in simple harmonic motion. The displacement of a particle varies with time as x is equals to 12 sine omega t minus 16 sine cube omega t. Oh god, what equation we have. Sine cube omega t is present. If the particle is executing simple harmonic motion, then its maximum acceleration is, thank god, particle is executing SHM. We can relax now. We just have to find the maximum acceleration. Now, question says particle is under SHM. And when we have a particle executing simple harmonic motion like this, we can say x is equals to a sine of some angular frequency omega naught times t plus 5. This is the useful format we use to see simple harmonic motion. Okay. And now you can double differentiate it. You will get acceleration as minus a. Uh, times omega naught square sine of omega naught t plus phi. Is it? Yes. Now tell me what is the maximum magnitude of acceleration? What is the maximum magnitude of acceleration? It is a times omega naught square. We get this acceleration when the particle is at the extreme positions. Yes. Now we can see the magnitude of uh, uh, maximum acceleration but but 
our equation was this it was not in this beautiful looking format we have to somehow convert this dangerous looking equation in, into this beautiful format so how to do that well there is a way out you have to remember some trigonometric identities see our equation contains sin cube term now do you remember any trigonometric identity with sin cube of theta in it do you remember it i will give you a clue look about or think about sin sin 3 theta sin 3 theta was 3 sin theta minus 4 sin cube theta is it or not if you remember this it's good if you don't remember this you can just see this equation on the screen you can write it down and then later you can mug it up okay fine now let's apply this equation but but let's just simplify our equation x is coming out to be 4 times now we have 3 sin of omega t wow yummy minus 4 sin cube omega t oh god now these two perfectly matches with each other Ooh. so we are getting x is equals to 4 times sin of 3 omega t yes so x is equals to a sin of omega not t this is our format so what is a a is equals to 4 what is omega not what is the angular frequency it is 3 omega yes now once we get this the maximum magnitude of acceleration is a times omega not square and this is 4 times 3 omega whole square what is this this is nothing but uh, 36 times omega uh, square yes so we got the maximum magnitude of acceleration and it is 36 omega square now we can go and mark option b 36 omega square as the right answer for our question let's have a look at this lovely question based on superimposition of shm three particle execute shm along x direction with the same frequency so all the shms are along the x axis and the frequency is same also the angular frequencies will also be same okay so x1 is 5 sin omega t x2 is 5 sin omega t plus 53 degree and x3 is minus 10 cos omega t so these are the three equation of shms and find the amplitude of the resultant shm what is the amplitude of the resultant shm this is the question okay now how do we superimpose these simple harmonic motion we must know that now i will tell you step by step method to do that so first of all you can see the three equation uh, which were given in the question now our first step is let's just check whether the equation are in this particular format or not the format is xn is equals to an sin of omega t plus phi n this must be your format okay okay we can see x1 is in this particular format can you see that yes now let's look at x2 is x2 looking out to be in this particular format or not x2 is also in this format good 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 what about x3 is x3 in this format no x3 is not in that format because x3 has cos omega t but we can see that we can convert that into this format so we can write this as 10 sin of omega t minus pi by 2 now you can see sin of omega t minus pi by 2 is nothing but minus cos omega t so we have successfully converted x3 into our format okay so now we have the similar format for everything now comes the second step the second step uh, is uh, you have to draw some arrows so how to draw these arrows so x1 uh, we can see the amplitude is 5 so my arrow will be of length 5 and what is the phase constant phase constant is 0 okay so i will draw an arrow of length 5 like this 
which makes zero degree with the horizontal. Is that clear? Yes. What is the magnitude? Pi. Now let's look at x2. It has the magnitude 5. What is the phase constant? What is the phase constant? It is 53 degree. Okay. So we have to draw an arrow of length 5. But the angle it will make from the horizontal will be 53 degree now. Okay. Yes. So the length is 5. Nice. Now you can draw your own arrow for x3. What is the amplitude? Amplitude is 10. What is the phase constant? It is minus pi by 2 or minus 90 degree. So we draw our third arrow which makes an angle of minus 90 degree from the horizontal and the length is 10. Nice, nice, nice. Now you have to just do the vector sum. So let's find the vector sum. Uh, we can break 1, 5 into two components. Uh, this 5 will be broken into two components. One component is 5 cos 53. Another component is 5 sin 53. 5 cos 53 is nothing but uh, uh, 3 and 5 sin 53 is nothing but 4. And then we will draw the other arrows. This is 5 and this is 10. Okay. What are we getting? We are getting interesting thing. We are getting 5 plus 3 as 8 in this direction, horizontal direction. In the negative y-axis, in the negative vertical direction, we are getting 6. Okay? Okay. Now, uh, when we find the resultant uh, of these two, you can see our resultant will be having the magnitude of 10. 6 square plus 8 square whole under root is equal to 10. Can you see that? Yes. So this is the resultant is of magnitude 10. And what is this angle? Well, we can find this angle. Let's say this angle is theta. We can see that 10 of theta is nothing but 6 by 8 or 3 by 4. This means theta must be equal to 37 degree, right? Right. So theta is 37 degree. Hooray, hooray, hooray. We got the final resultant. Now let's write the equation. The equation will be x is equals to 10 sine of omega t minus 37 degree. Can you see that? Yes. If we represent this equation with an arrow, we will use this arrow, this yellow arrow of magnitude 10, which makes an angle of 37 degree in the uh, negative direction from the horizontal. Okay, okay. Now we have represented our final resultant like this. What is the amplitude of the final resultant? It is 10. It is 10 units. Nice. So we can go and mark option, option C, 10 units to be the right answer for our question. Let's have a look at a question on damping. Which of the following curves represents damped harmonic motion? Now, which of the following curves between displacement and time, which of these graphs will represent damped harmonic motion? So, in graph A, we can see the amplitude is actually decreasing with time. And in graph B, we can see amplitude is increasing and then decreasing with time. And then in graph C, amplitude is increasing with time. And finally, it is becoming constant. And in option D, amplitude just decreases with time. Now, which of these curves correctly represents damped harmonic motion? This is the question. Okay. So, we know everything about simple harmonic motion so far. In simple harmonic motion, F is equal to minus Kx. This is our restoring force. Now, what is this damped harmonic motion? In this damped harmonic motion, we get another force in addition to this restoring force. That another force is the damping force. Damping force is a function of velocity. So I can just simply write it as minus BB. Okay? Okay. Now when we have this damping force also, then there is some energy loss and the amplitude decreases with time. Amplitude decreases with time. Let me show you an example. So here is an example of damping. So you can see amplitude is decreasing with time. If you draw the curve between displacement and time, 
the curve would look like this. Amplitude is decreasing with time. Wow. So we got the curve for damping. Yes. Now there are some special cases also. When we have very large damping constant, then the particle might not overshoot on the other side. So these are over damped oscillation and uh, there is also a special case. When the motion just ceases, we have critical damping. Did you see that? Just ceases. Wow. So if you draw the graph, the graph would be amazing. Uh, let me choose a different color for that. So this would be a graph uh, X versus T. The graph is like this. Wow. So we are neglecting this, these special cases of critical damping and over damping. And we are just talking about uh, normal under damped cases in which we have this graph where the amplitude decreases with time. Okay. Yes. Now we can just go and mark option A as the right answer for our question. Let's have a look at this awesome question on damping. The amplitude of a damped oscillator becomes one fourth in one minute. Yes. So let's assume that the initial amplitude was A naught. This was at t is equals to zero. Now at t is equals to one minute, the amplitude becomes one fourth. That is the amplitude is A naught by four now. Okay. And then the amplitude after 16 minutes, that is at t is equals to 16 minutes, the amplitude is one x of its original amplitude. This means it is A naught by X. Okay. The question says find the value of X. What is the value of X? This is the question. Did we understand the question? Yes, we did. Now, how do we solve it? The question said amplitude became one fourth after one minute and amplitude became A naught by X after 16 minutes find the value of x. How do we solve it? Well, we must know that in damped harmonic oscillation, the amplitude decreases exponentially with time. If you know this, you can solve this question. What did I just say? In damped harmonic motion, amplitude decreases exponentially with time. So, the equation of amplitude will be A0, which is the initial amplitude, times e raised to power minus some constant let me write it as R times T. Okay, this is the equation. Very nice. Now I choose this R in such a way that I can write time in minutes. Okay, let's not worry about R. Now I will use this equation two times and I will get the answer like magic. So uh, at T is equals to one, amplitude is A naught by four. And this is equal to A naught E raised to power minus R and I put time as one. Okay, this is our first equation and from this equation we can see that uh, uh, e raised to power r is coming out to be a uh, 4. Okay, we understand that. Now let me write another equation, our second equation. Amplitude becomes a naught by x after t is equal to 16 minute. So this is a naught e raised to power minus r times 16. Okay. So what does this equation says? Uh, this equation says that uh, uh, x is equal to e raised to power r whole raised to power 16. Do you see that? Yes, we can see that. Now, let's use these two equations and let's get the answer. So I will put uh, e raised to power r as 4. So x is equal to uh, 4 raised to power 16. This is nothing but 2 raised to power 32. Wow! We got the value of x finally. It is 2 raised to power 32. Hoo, hoo, hoo. So we can go and mark option D as the right answer for our question.